in this video we will see how we can create a new table online and create this new contact. So if you go to the back endless website quickly where you've logged in, uh, you can see that we have no app tables yet. So it you are able to go and create a new table by clicking the plus sign there and now naming your, your table contact or whatever and you create it. And then you can see that your contact table uh, will be there and it asks you do you want to add some columns and you can add some columns let's say name and so forth so we can say name as a string we can set a new column there let's say a number as a string and so forth so you can keep on adding your contact table here so you'll see what get, gets automatically added to your table is the created and the updated fields there. Also in your data browser, you can see there's an object ID. There's an owner ID, there's created and updated. So what we essentially want to do in Java or in Android, we want to create a class called contact. And that class called contact will become my table online. And the fields in that class, which is name and number and object ID and created and updated, those become my columns. Okay, so I'm going to delete this here because we will create this table in uh, in coding. And that's a better way to do it so that you know that everything is set up correctly. So let's go back to Android Studio. And what we want to do next is to create a new class. So we're going to say new Java class. And we're going to call this class the name that you want to name your table. So I'm going to call this the contact table. Right, so that's the contact class. And we'll have a few variables there or a few um, fields at the top, which will become our columns. So we'll have a name, sorry, string name. We'll have a name for our contact. We will have a number for our contact. And we'll have an email for our contact. Then also you, could, you, you saw online that we have some other fields that we can also uh, basically get for every table that we create. So if we go back quickly, you can even see on your users table, you've got email name and so forth, but there's an object ID and there's a created and updated. So if you want to have access to these columns called object ID created and updated, then you must add them to your class as well. You do not need to add them to your class, but these are generated or created automatically. So I'm going to include them just to include everything that we possibly can here. So I'm going to say private date and that date must be of java.util and I'm going to call it exactly the same that you see the spelling online which is the spelling so make sure it's created private date updated and then we also have a private string object ID and please note the spelling so these this object ID for example you can see the spelling there's object ID capital I Created all lowercase, updated all lowercase. So make sure that you type it exactly the same. And then you're basically done. So that's the contact class will become the contact table. And every one of these fields or variables that we have here will become a column in that table. So the last thing that you need to do in this class is just to right click and to say generate, get to end setter, select all of them and say OK. And I recommend you doing that instead of typing out your getters and setters because uh, we need the Java convention in order to for backenders to work. So it must be, for example, get name must have the get keyword in front of it, and then the end of name must be capitalized. You can see get number the same thing. So if you do not know how to type this out correctly, in any case, the faster route is to just say right click and generate. Now you will realize that we do not have any constructor in this class. So this is exactly how we want it for back endless. If you do not provide a constructor for uh, your class, the default one will be basically provided. And the basic one or the default one will set all the string fields or object fields to null, which include this string and date and string. Everything will be set to null right from the start. And then every, let's say you've got an integer or a double variable here, will set that variable to zero and if you've got a boolean value it's going to set that one to false so that's what the default one does if you do not add any constructor at all okay so now basically what we'll do is we create a new contact object and then we use the setters to set the values right so this is done for for the contact class now if we go back to our new contact uh, you will see that 
we basically set up all the components and then when the user clicks on the button we want to do something right so what do we want to do firstly we want to see that the user is entering all the data so let's just go to the layout again it is new contact so the user must basically type on every single one of those fields for a new contact to be made. So it's ET name, ET number, and ET mail. So we're going to test if ET mail dot get text dot to string dot is empty, if it's empty, or ET name dot get text dot to string dot is empty, or at the same time ET number dot get text dot to string dot is empty so if any one of them this one didn't auto complete there we go if the user leaves open one of those fields we will just show a toast there for the user and tell him to please enter all fields right so that is basically it for testing that these fields are empty or not so if they are empty then we will fill out all the fields. The else part is everything is fine and we will now start creating that new contact. So for the contact we need a few variables. So I'm going to get the name from it. So that's et name dot get text. Get text dot to string dot trim. And we'll also get uh, the email and the email will be etmail dot get text dot to string dot trim and then we'll also have string what is the last one the number there that will this be the cell phone number so we're going to call it et number dot get text dot to string dot trim so now we've got all the details that we want from this a specific contact and we can now start creating this contact online so first before we take the contact online we're going to go back to our contact class that we just created and we're going to create a new object of it so i'm going to say contact contact equals new contact and remember we are using the default constructor so it's basically passing in nothing now on that contact we're going to set or use the setters to set a few values so i'm going to say and remember you're basically only going to set the values that you want for that specific one which is these the created updated and object id will automatically be there for you so we will go and say set the name and we pass in the name variable that we had there then we're going to say contact dot set email and we pass in the email that we got from the user and then we're going to say contact dot set number and then we're going to pass in the number and that is basically setting up the contact now just something else here in, in our application we're actually logging in and we can create new accounts with the login screen so what we can do here is to say well let's go to the application class and then i'm going to add a, a public static variable here and i'm going to call it Let's, call, let's make it a back endless user um, variable, back endless user variable. So it's a public static back endless user and the name is user. So it's in the application class. So to refer to it, I'll say application class dot user. So now the reason behind this is for every contact that we create now here, we can also link one of our users that's currently logged in to that contact so that every guy with his own account will have his own set of contacts so where do we need to do that firstly if you go to your login activity and you go down a bit and you can see here we have successfully logged in this person so what we can do here is to then yeah we where we log in the person we go to the application class and we say dot sorry application class dot and you can see there's the user and we set this user to the response that we had here and you can see it's the back endless user object so now we know if the guy uses the login screen and he types his username and his password and he's into the app we have our user that's in the application class set to that logged in user so that's the that's the one part where we can do this if we log in the user if you register a new user it's not necessary if you reset the password it's not necessary 
but also if we load and check if the user is already logged in. So this one is basically logging you in and there we get the back endless user response again. So here again we can go and say application class dot user equals this response. So whether the user is using the login screen to log in or he's already logged in, then if it's already logged in, it's, it, it will go to this part and we also get a hold of that user so that we can set the contacts. Every contact will belong to a specific user. Okay, so we've got the application class's response there and just remember now that we want to also add maybe an email address for the user. So for our contact table, I'm going to add another field here. Let's say private string user email so that we can get a hold of the users user that's currently logged in and we save this contact for that specific user. So the next time he logs in, he will only see his own contacts and not contacts of somebody else. Okay, so let's go to the new contact one again. Uh, let, let's just go back to contact. We need to have a get and a setter for this. So right click, generate, get and setter, choose it, say OK. So we've got get user email and set user email. So that's what we want to do now. So when we create a new contact, I'm going to add that also contact dot set user email and the user email I'll get from the application class dot user that's the back endless user and if I put a dot on that you can see I can get the email for that user so the email for that user if we go back to the website it will basically be this email field that we're returning so we're using a specific user that's logged in to work with these contacts in that table right let's go back to Android Studio so now we've created a new contact we set the name the email of the new contact the number and the user to which that contact belongs okay so now we can go into the background and start setting or creating this new user or this new contact so I'm gonna say show progress true to start showing the progress bar then I'm gonna say TV load dot set text now remember TV load TV load is let me just see where we are now. Let's go to new contact. So TV load is the text view that will show with the progress bar. So we can set the text on it. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to say TV load dot set text creating new contact. Please wait. Right. And now we can go into the background and actually save this new contact to the database. So we're going to say back endless dot persistence. So this is a bit different now. A bit different now. In the previous one we said back endless dot user service. So now we say back endless dot persistence dot save. And you can see there's two. This one is for Java. That one is for Android. So we first need to have the entity, and then we go into the background. So the entity is just the object. So we're going to pass in the object called contact there, and then the second argument new async callback. Right, so now we have handle response again and handle fault. So in handle fault, if something went wrong, we will just go and say error and show that fault dot get message to get the fault. Just remember also to stop the progress from showing when you have an error. Now in the handle response means that we have been successfully or we saved this contact now successfully. So now in this part is where we can tell the user you know save successfully and whatever we want to do yeah so I'm going to show a toast and we will just say yeah new contact saved successfully right after that it's now up to you what you want to do yeah but we can go and set this to false remember we are in in this activity so if the user clicks on create new contact it will show the progress bar create that new contact online and then when it's done what do you want to do so in this video we, what we'll do is we'll we'll empty up these three fields so that the user can add a new contact but you can also decide to close down this activity and it goes back to the main activity so it's really up to you what you want to do so what i will do here in my new contact.java i will say let's stop showing the progress and then for et name, we're going to set the text to nothing. So to empty up that edit text and go to et mail and set the text also. 
come on say text also to nothing and then et number dot set text also to nothing okay and that is basically it then so when the user is has saved this new contact we know then it's online and we will show the progress while it's doing that if it's done we will say new contact says successfully and we close it down so let's just see if this one works run this application again so just before we look at the virtual device you can see that i even if i refresh here i do not have any app tables there so let's open up the virtual device and see when it runs right so there the application starts it's checking the login credentials logging you in please wait so remember by this time now we've got the logged in user in the application class so now if i say create contact let's add a, a name there let's say john rambo contact number one two three four five six seven eight nine doesn't matter please enter the contact email let's say john r at gmail.com and we say create a new contact so now it creates the contact creating new contact new contact say it successfully you can see that all the fields are cleared now you can see that we do not have that table here so the very first time that you actually create or you add a new contact to that table and the table does not exist you will see it creates that contact table for you so now we have that contact table click on it and you can see there's the email there's the name there's the number also the user email for the guy that's currently logged in is chuck at gmail.com okay so it's saved successfully you can also see your object id was saved and you've got something in created so if you want the, to get the date where this was created in coding you can just refer to that object and call get created or get updated right so that's basically it for this video we've got a new contact we are able to create a new contact and then add that contact to the database online so in the next video we'll have a look at the list the contact list to show a list of the contacts that we have currently in our database